Hi, my name's Darren Evans, I'm Technical Director at AEC. Uh, and I'm David Russell, I'm the Senior Occupational Hygienist here at AEC. Um, what we want to talk about here, Dave, is the HSE's recent um, alert on welding fume mm -hmm. and its implications for welders, of course, and clients and what they might have to do. With this new with this new alert, what they're saying is there is no known safe limit um, to welding fume. So that presumably doesn't just apply to the welders, but it applies to anybody in the vicinity. So if you're on a construction site or in an engineering workshop, mm -hmm. you could be affected as well. That's correct. I think the, the big issue that they're looking at is residual fume, not just not just the fume that's that's potentially being breathed in by the welder doing the job, yeah. but also the residual fume that's that's present within. Um, within the workplace and within the background areas that people that are just passing through the workshop might also be affected by if it's not adequately controlled at source. Because sometimes when you see you go into an engineering workshop you might have your welding booths on one mm -hmm. side but yep. you can you can see like a, a fog of fume can't you and the other guys will be working yep. within that area doing other tasks but now of course you know, we need to be considering their exposure to welding fume as well as the actual welders. Yeah, you see, historically, welders have always been well protected because generally welders will be put into RPE. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll typically wear positive pressure pressure masks when they weld, so they're, they're quite well protected. However, the people, as you say, in the area around it don't generally consider themselves welders, so therefore they probably wouldn't be wearing RPE. Mm -hmm. So and sometimes you see welders when they've got the visor, so the visor protects their eyes from archi and obviously splatter and stuff, but sometimes they don't wear RP underneath, so they do the welding and then they lift it up and they kind of inhale as that's, well. That's so correct. that's kind of what, what you actually see sometimes on welding, don't you? Particularly outside on a construction site where they wouldn't necessarily put a mask on, they, more, they seem to me to be more concerned about their eyes rather yes. than they do about yeah. what they're breathing in. Yeah, well the new, the new guidance from the HSC that came out with the alert uh, has now stipulated that all welding fumes should be controlled through engineering methods, which is predominantly LEV. Yeah. You know, unless you can engineer it out, unless you can get rid of the welding element altogether. So by prefabricated. Prefabrication, for buying it in already welded, yeah. uh, or, or setting up some sort of robot jig. Yeah. Potentially, but typically your welders will now have to control the welding fume through engineering controls, which is typically LEV systems. Yeah. Now, so that could be on tool, couldn't it? Could be on tool extraction, it could be the portable flexible arms, yeah. or it could be a bigger fixed system depending on the type of job that, that, that's in hand. And if, where, it, where you're doing it. Where you're doing it. Yeah. Now, if you can't prove that the LEV is controlling the fumes correctly, then you've also got to supplement that with RPE mm -hmm. and, and not just give someone a mask. You've got to give them a mask, to make sure it's the right type of mask, the right filter. Um, make sure if it's a, a tight fitting half face mask that they've got suitable face fit test. Uh -huh. Whether um, under the cosh regs as well that all PPE has got to be controlled and tested every 28 days. Yeah. So you've got to have a proper RPE program to go with your RPE that you give people. You can't just give them a disposable mask and say, right, I've done my bit and get on with it. So the, one of the implications of cosh, of course, is, is information, instruction and training. So this new alert, anybody who's affected by welding, theoretically their employers should be speaking to them and saying you are exposed to a, a proven carcinogen now. Mm -hmm. and they, so there's why they have to wear um, and use, why, why they have to wear the RP or use a control measure and, and when and how, that's what yep. you're saying as part of that. Mm -hmm. But of course I, I suppose the first thing now is if you're a, an employer carrying out welding and you've got your own, you know, your existing risk assessments one assumes that you have, the first thing this alert's going to do is make you, should make you review your risk assessment. It should. It should. You, you should. you need to really look at your risk assessment, look how you currently control the fumes, and, and if your, your method of control is just RPE, then, then it's our understanding that the HSC won't accept that as suitable. You will need to look into providing whether it's portable extraction um, mm. or, or whether it's a, a bigger system. Um, but you need some form of engineering control or, to, or you need to prove that you're not generating any fume that could be residual fume that could affect people in the area as well. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a bit of a key area though, isn't it? Because one of the welder's complaints is about if you've got LEV, it removes the gases so mm -hmm. the weld is poor. So welders are perhaps sometimes disinclined to use LEV systems because it affects the quality of their work. So there's, is there any new technology out there about this? Do we know of or not? 
There are, there are. If you talk to the manufacturers, they're, 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 they're quite happy that they can set up systems that are suitable for welders, that yeah. it doesn't affect the weld, whether that be on tool extraction or the portable systems and, and the flexible elephant trunk yeah. that you move in. If, if you set it up right and you use it correctly with the dampers and get the distance right, then there's no reason why you can't control the fume of source. Yeah. There's also an element of, of retraining your welder a little bit to make sure that he's not got his head between the, the point of contamination generation and the extraction system, which you often do, yeah. as well as often uh, work over the job to, to get the job done. So he's, he effectively he blocks out, his head he, blocks out where the, the extraction, the, the, the is, extraction yeah. is. I mean, th there are key things really, aren't there? I mean, there's huge implications under COSH. You've already got an existing risk assessment, you've got existing uh, practices and controls. This is now saying there's no safe level. It's a known carcinogen to lungs as well as potentially to kidneys. And so this this will affect the whole review. You, surely there's exposure monitoring um, is gonna be needed. Um, yeah, definitely. I think, I think in order to in order to prove you've got control, you know, yeah. how do you do that? Yeah. And, and, and one of the easiest ways of doing it is <coughs> doing exposure monitoring. Um, you can do it both personal monitoring on the welder yeah. Which, which again, if he's positioning himself right and he's working right, then again, he shouldn't be exposed to anything, even with a mask on and, and RPE on underneath. And then also personal monitoring on guys working within the nearby vicinity and background monitoring to make yeah. sure that there's no residual fume in the area. I mean, one of the concerns would be, I think, uh, you know, you're on a construction site or somewhere working outdoors, um, you know, what kind of monitoring? There seems to be the the inference that because it's outside and it's diluted, it isn't uh, isn't as big a concern. But that isn't the HSC's opinion, is it? No, no. The the, the HSC will now no longer accept the fact that it's outdoors as a yeah. as a as, an, as a, a reason for control, yeah. um, as a means of control. Um, what they will rely uh, require is the welder himself to be wearing suitable RPE. Yeah. Um, you understand, and you know, it, it's you know, the practicalities of dragging a portable LED system, you up know, a scaffold for up example, a scaffold yeah. onto a roof or outside, you know, mm. it isn't going to happen. So rather than, than try and get people to do that, and they know it's not going to happen, I think I think they rely on that you need to use RPE as a minimum when welding outdoors. But they want you to follow the hierarchy of control, don't you? So sort of straight away from from you know elimination and substitution yeah. all the way down, and PP is the last resort. Now, as a hygienist, I know you brought this up with me a few times, is the, the workplace exposure limit. We don't have one in the UK just for welding fume, do no. we? So, <coughs> I mean, what are the implications or what are the practicalities of that? Because you need to know what type of metal and what the consumables are mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff, don't you? Whether it's galvanised, stainless? There is, this, is, this is a tricky area, I think. It's a bit of a grey area because on one hand, you've got the HSE coming out saying there's no safe limit. But yet, on the other hand, you've still got EH40 yeah. that, that's got published guidelines for metals and, and, and inhalable dust as a nuisance in there, respirable yeah. dust. Um, the way I would approach it is, is obviously try and reduce it to as low as reasonably practicable, as far as you can down. Yeah. If you're welding substances that have got things like hexavalent chromine, for example, from stainless steel. Which is really toxic. Which is quite toxic. Um, then, then you want to be well below the limit as, as far as you can with the aim to, to obviously eliminating it and being below, below the limit of detection for your methods used, really. Yeah. Um, but again, I think until, until the HSE bring out new guidance, then I think everybody's just gonna look on it as, let's try and get it down as low as we possibly can. And as long as you can prove that you've got control and you've uh, looked at it and you've risk assessed it and you've probably carried out some exposure monitoring to prove your controls are working, then I think you're doing as much as you can at the moment. So in conclusion, Dave, um, what the HSC would expect, the bare minimum is a review of your existing risk assessments. Um, uh -huh. You know, that could and should involve uh, reviewing exposure monitoring and AEC obviously can help um, exposure monitoring and planning those risk assessments and give good advice on yep, control definitely. measures that are required um, to control the exposure of your staff to, weld, to welding for you. Thanks for watching.